welcome to this week's episode of Being Human. I am going solo this week. Uh, we're in the middle of holiday season, a lot of people on vacation. And I'm going to devote this episode to my experiences with meditation. For those of you who recall episode 175 of Being Human, I interviewed Gillian Lavender, author of the book, Why Meditate. And reading that book and having that conversation with Gillian completely flipped my attitude to meditation. I, Up until that time, I'd been attempting to get into a meditation habit for years, but there were, th there were three messages in her book that made a huge difference for me. So the first is that she introduced a super simple version of meditation that I hadn't encountered before. In this version, you can sit in a comfortable chair. You don't have to cross your legs. You're not sitting on the floor. You, you close your eyes. You're not having to stare at the wall or some dead guru. You can scratch and you can itch. You can be relaxed about that. So really, as easy as, as uh, you could imagine in terms of developing a discipline around it. And so that was really appealing. The second thing that she talks about, and this was critical for me, was that meditation is more restful than sleep. So prior to reading her book, when I'd been trying to develop a meditation habit, if I was looking like I wasn't going to get enough sleep, I wasn't going to get my eight hours, I would skip the meditation and I, and I perhaps wouldn't get up early in order to meditate because I'd prefer to have the sleep, thinking it was much better that I got the sleep. Uh, than worry about keeping up with my meditation routine. Well, it turns out that's wrong. She cites in her book research that discovered that people who are meditating consume half the oxygen of those sleeping. So people meditating consume half the oxygen than those even in deep sleep that suggests the brain is significantly less active, more restful during so it's more restful to be in meditation than it is to be in sleep, which I think at the time the researchers hadn't expected. And so what that meant for me was I could feel free to sacrifice sleep to meditation. It didn't matter if I, and, th and this has been true for me, or if I've been in certain situations, I'm traveling or, you know, with the kids or whatever, and maybe I've only got even a maximum of five hours sleep. To, well, I'll, I'll still sacrifice. I'll still have four hours sleep and meditate meditate each side of it and that i found it to be true that i feel much more rested than if i'd taken that time for sleep instead so that was a huge breakthrough in terms of um, my attitude towards uh, meditation and the third thing she talks about is that other forms of activity cannot substitute for meditation even if you find them relaxing even if you find them beneficial in other ways <laughs> running isn't meditation yoga isn't meditation listening to enya isn't meditation and there's research uh, to back this up that it's only when we take on specific meditation practices that we reach that deeply restful meditative state so we can only get there through proper meditation techniques. So it was armed with those three pieces of information that I had a completely new attitude towards it. And I actually attempted to do a course with Gillian uh, directly after the episode, this is back in August 2021. And we were just coming out of lockdown in the UK. And unfortunately, at that time, their venue was insisting on everyone wearing masks. And I wasn't going to sit in front of loads of meditate in a mask for you know, a couple of days. That just did not appeal. So I was very lucky. I found somebody online. Her name is Narada Kush. And the experience I had with Narada seemed to be very similar to the one that Gillian had described. And one of the, the key aspects of uh, this type of meditation is that you're given a, a personalized mantra by, uh, by your guru, by a guru. And so Narada, over a course of three Skype sessions, worked with me and gave me my mantra, which I still, still use. And I have found to have made the whole process much easier for me. The other aspect of this is it's, this, it's two, two slots of 20 minutes. So two slots of 20 minutes, which, again, I found really appealing. And I have 
found easy to integrate into my life. I do 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the evening. Mm-hmm. I have to say, after a month or so getting into it back in uh, late summer of 2021, I've now pretty much stuck to meditating twice a day ever since, which I would have never expected to be able to say. So I'm hugely grateful to Gillian and to Narada to point me in this in this direction. And everything that Gillian talks about in the book has come true for me. So one of the things she talks about is how your sleep improves. And that is absolutely true. I feel much more rested after sleep. Uh, I am a man in my 40s and uh, many men of my age and older will uh, share how you know it reaches that stage where you're, you're having to get up into night, in the night to go to the loo. I just I used to have that before I started getting into meditation and now I sleep all the way through. Um, I have probably the best sleep I've had for, for decades as a result of meditation, so that's really important. The second thing is that life has just got easier. Uh, my life goes more smoothly. I just feel like I'm in, in tune and in flow with life and I find that much easier. I'm, I'm calmer. I get less triggered by events. The therapy that I continue to do definitely has continues to contribute to that. In fact, I'm less emotive, less reactive, but the meditation uh, has built on that and also I think has played in significantly to me being calmer in general through life. So it's, uh, it's just given me all of the benefits that Gillian had said it would. And so for an investment of a few hundred bucks with, with Narada to get going with this, it's, uh, it's more than paid itself back. In fact, I would, I would argue as a singular investment in self-development, this is, this is probably the best, the best one. Um, and the other thing I should talk about is that meditation, in terms of those of you who are interested in manifestation and visualizing and becoming um, more effective at fulfilling on your goals, I found that meditation also aids with that. I'm just able to more easily visualize my goals and what I want to have them happen in life. And then I, because I'm calmer, I'm just more tuned into what's going around me and more of the in the flow, uh, attracting opportunities and making the most of opportunities has become easier with, with meditation. Also, something that I expected to potentially be a problem has not been a problem. So I remember early therapy, therapists talking about the, the dangers of spiritual bypass. So those of you listening to the podcast will know I've spent now over a decade in emotional trauma release work and it's transformed my life. Um, but there is this risk of spiritual bypass, and that's the idea that if we spend too much time meditating, we, we go off into a transcendental la-la land and use that as a way to avoid doing the, the deep work and the, the hard work of engaging with our pain and releasing our trauma. I've not found that to be an issue at all. Uh-huh. Sometimes pain and feelings will come up during meditation. I allow them to come up. Sometimes I'll break off the meditation to process them. <laughs> I just, I just allow the two to work with each other. I don't, I don't use meditation as a way to escape that feelings coming up. Um, so maybe that is a risk, and maybe some people have fallen into that trap. But it just hasn't been an issue for me. I still find myself connecting to my feelings. I still find myself doing the trauma release work. Uh, two don't seem to interfere at all. Uh, so it's a relief that uh, that hasn't hasn't been the case. So in conclusion, I highly recommend this form of meditation, Vedic meditation. You can access Narada uh, through his website, and I'll provide a link to that in the description, to, uh, description to this episode. Get the book, Why Meditate. Brilliant, uh, brilliant. Easy to read, uh, very simple. Uh, so if you're curious about meditation uh, and you're not quite ready to go learn how to meditate uh then then the, the book is a great first step I'll, I'll put a link to that and i'll put a link to the episode that i did with Gillian, as well as to her center the Living meditation center hope that was useful yeah let me know if you've got any experiences with meditation in the comments uh, and see you all again soon